The biggest comeback in Rocket League history has been largely forgotten, but it's one of the greatest moments in the history of the game. A world championship team, a must-win match, a new wave of players changing the game, and of course, the biggest comeback ever. But it came at a time when most people were focused on something else. So this specific series, this specific era, never really got the attention it deserved. It's March 14th, 2020. Week six of the Rocket League Championship Series, season nine. Back then, professional Rocket League was organized into a league with a relegation and promotion system. 10 teams earned their spot through open qualification and then played each other over the course of eight weeks. That was your season. The teams with the best records would go to the RLCS World Championship, which happened twice a year. Nowadays, it's much different. The season consists of dozens of open tournaments to qualify for major tournaments, and then eventually the World Championship Tournament tournament. Hundreds of random teams can participate, so you get some really exciting ones to follow, like, uh, 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 oh, and there's a point system, and, uh, actually, I'm getting bored just talking about it. <laughs> Let's go back to a simpler time, a time I like to call the golden era of professional Rocket League. The matchup today is Squishy, Torment, and Gimmick. The legendary Cloud9 versus Dapper, Sathew, and Shock of the Sonics. I say the legendary Cloud9 because this team has by far the largest fan base in the game at this point, an equally prolific reputation on the field. They had, after all, just won a world championship in season six. However, something happened in professional Rocket League right after that that kind of changed everything for Cloud9. Immediately following their world championship, they had a decent season, winning the first four matchups. We love North America because it's something that we can really rely on. But then things went south and never really recovered. They lost the last three weeks of the season, slipping down to the third seed from North America for the RLCS championship in Newark. There, they were swept by the eventual champion Vitality in the semifinals. Then in season eight, it got even worse. They missed out on the RLCS championship completely, and Squishy had to watch from home as Garrett G, Justin, and Turbopulsa won the first and only world championship for NRG. So what changed so drastically in those two seasons to drop Cloud9 from dominant world champion to barely scraping by in their own region? We got to address it, of course. Been a rough, you know, last season and this season as well. Can you just walk me through, you know, the last two seasons and, and what's been going on? Well, there was a massive shift in the meta brought about by a new generation of players. Last season was definitely really hard because of the whole, like, meta switch. The easiest, although probably most oversimplified way to explain the new meta is basically chasing and demos. The new meta was to chase and demo more. How exciting. What is it that you think that the new teams are doing now in North America that are causing problems for the old guard? Play style is just so fast now. Ball chasing is 100% the key right now. I don't think the old players are used to it as much. Uh, the demo better coming in, it was really like countering our play style, so it was really hard for us to like kind of adjust and like kind of adapt to the meta. Cloud9 did not look like themselves last season, and I'm wondering if that's still a, a meta that's going to be difficult for some of these top teams. This new wave included players like Rettles, Gyro, Mist, Sipical, Arsenal, and Hawkser, to name a few. Suddenly, teams that had historically dominated were having trouble keeping up. Cloud9 was one of those teams. Cloud9 had a bit of a rough season, an abysmal season. Just, just guess, a bit. I guess we should say. At this point, they were one of the longest standing rosters in the game, but with all the struggles, they decided it was time to make a change. So they began the process of bringing on a younger player who could compete against the new wave of pros. The player they were targeting was an up-and-coming prospect named Hoxer. He would be replacing the World Championship MVP, Torment. Wait a minute, that never happened. Well, yeah, you see, the move didn't end up working out, which, needless to say, made things a little awkward for C9. There was a lot of rumors going around. There was a potential for a roster move, but then um, it got negated for some reason. For Torment, you know, he was uh, probably going to get replaced on Cloud9. Um, there was like some stuff in the offseason that kind of like messed up the vibe a little bit. Imagine trying to play your best on a team with two other guys that tried to kick you. And it completely backfired because they had to try and take someone off the team, then bring them back on. It's hard to bring someone back after that. So that's gonna be tough to deal with. So it was no surprise that here in season nine, Cloud9 got off to a rough start. Feel the shot off the crossbar, rebound, score for Roldis, and E-United sweep Cloud9. This is not the same Cloud9 
that we saw take a world championship title. Kronobi. Bro. Can he do it himself? He can't for Rogue past the last defender. And I say it was no surprise, but actually it was kind of still a surprise, which I think just shows how dominant this roster was in seasons past. Wait, are Rogue turning it around or a Cloud9 that it's bad? It's, that is, it's, it's a serious question. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. And, and to me, I think Cloud9 are that bad. The narrative was all about when are they going to get back to their former glory? Is Cloud9 in a position to bounce back? Back in season six, when they won the world championship, it was beautiful from them. It, was, <laughs> it doesn't take away from the great legacy that we've had, but we have to prove that we're going to be good this season. G2 is, is looking as formidable as ever. And Cloud9 looking as beatable as ever. This may have been the first time that RLCS fans were realizing just how quickly things change in Rocket League. Seems like something's just missing. Uh, maybe just their chemistry in general is a little bit off. Cloud9, I can't trust them anymore. If, if, they, don't, if they don't improve, they disband at the end of the season. And while some OG pros like Garrett G and JNaps were willing and able to grind it out and change their game to fit the new meta, others were ready to hang up the sticks for good. One of those players was Fireburner. He had been around since the birth of competitive Rocket League and played a key role in one of the most legendary moments in the game's history. But a world championship was always just out of reach for his team NRG, and he retired from competitive play after Vitality won RLCS in Season 7. And that's where these two forces in the community finally converged. Cloud9, with all their struggles, decided to bring on the recently retired Fireburner as a coach. Joining me now is the legendary ex-pro player, now turned coach for Cloud9. Fireburner was well-liked and respected by everyone in the scene, so it made sense that he could potentially bring together a team that had not only struggled with results, but also chemistry problems from their failed roster change. Now with the convergence of these two stories, a declining and struggling former world championship team, Cloud9, and an OG legend who had hung up the sticks for good in Fireburner, we finally come to week six of season nine and the biggest comeback in Rocket League history. The first match of the day was C9 versus Sonics. The narrative going into this match all revolved around Cloud9. Was this the series that they would finally turn it around and return to their dominant form? Most people didn't think so. If Torment and Gimmick continue to have communication issues like we've seen, I think Cloud9 could be in trouble. I just think that Cloud9, they put on too many weak shots. The Sonics, if you watch, they embrace the demo metal. And we've seen that Cloud9 is weak to that. Cloud9 make every other team look good. If Cloud9 couldn't win this next series, their playoff hopes were practically dead. And as if this series needed another wild historical moment, it also marked the debut of a legend. For the first time ever, Johnny Boy was casting RLCS. He had made a name for himself casting 1v1 show matches, and he did some interviews. But up until this moment, he had never cast an RLCS game. Little did Johnny know, his debut would be one of the most difficult and bizarre series in RLCS history. Speaking of debuts, Johnny, how you doing, man? It's good to be here, Shogun. Honestly, it's a dream come true for any Rocket League caster to be casting RLCS alongside yourself. Cloud9, this is a must-win game for them. It was a must-win for C9. But for the Sonics, it was just another regular season fixture as they had already secured their playoff spot. It's really patient play by the Sonics. They're just waiting for Cloud9 to give them the ball over and over again at the halfway line. The pressure was all on Cloud9, and... It was not going well. Do need to stay with the Sonics here. That's rolling on target. That's 1-0. And it's not looking good for Cloud9. That's game one to the Sonics. Two shots from Cloud9. For the first two games, everything was off. Miscue after miscue after miscue plagued the former world champions, especially on the defensive end. They need to start looking for each other in defense, Shogun, or this is going to be over before you know it. This is why we were worried about Cloud9. Now we get to see if they still have what it takes to get a comeback win. We've seen them do it so many times in the past, but recently it's not been happening. With their playoff life on the line, are they going to step up? It looked like any semblance of chemistry they had was gone for good, and they'd be in for a long series. Or, I guess a short series, because they were about to get swept. Follow up shot, right oh. in the top corner. This has got to be frustrating the veterans of RLCS. 
They can't even score a goal. It's almost two whole games and they haven't been able to put the ball into the orange net. This is where we find out if they've still got that champion's mentality. They don't look like the same Cloud9 that we've been enjoying watching for so many years now. They look like a totally different team. They look scared. They don't look confident. I don't see them having a chance of reverse sweeping the Sonics. But something else was off too. There was a slight tech delay after game two, which didn't seem like that big of a deal at the time. And the series continued into game three. By nine, they need the reverse sweep, Shogun. I wouldn't put my money on it personally. But now something even stranger was happening. C9 was playing well. Cloud9 looked faster, better in game three, much better. For a moment, they looked like their former selves. Though most people were still thinking that this series was pretty much over. I think they caught the Sonics off guard at the start of the game. That's what, what got them the 1-0 lead. But they hung on, and credit to them. They've got the game three win. They're still alive. They need two more if they're going to keep their playoff dreams alive. There was a glimmer of hope, but that glimmer of hope was shrinking fast as C9 clung on for dear life in game four, with less than a minute remaining. And that's where the really strange thing started happening. Corner's difficult to make something, but they've managed to do it. Shot is skied. So we do have a couple of players having a little wee rest here. Johnny and Shogun were forced to stall the broadcast for what seemed like hours as the RLCS admin struggled to figure out what was happening. For the players, they need to be ready to go full speed with 48 seconds remaining and their season on the line. We're going to be getting ourselves into this one very soon. It would not be soon. Um, I we've sort of gone through all of our conversation topics here, so I'm just going to ask you, are you excited to get back into this? The casters were running out of things to talk about. I've never been more excited for 48 seconds of Rocket League. When play finally resumed, much to the relief of the casters, nobody scored and the game was headed to overtime. It's off it. It's then going to the ground, actually. And this is overtime with Cloud9's playoff life on the line. And that's when Cloud9 viewers got a real blast from the past. Actually still going, that's the gimmick and that's the win! Squishy found gimmick in the middle for a vintage pass play game winner from the longtime duo. Cloud9 had somehow bounced back and this series was barreling towards the final game at Champions Field. I would ask you to try and analyze what we just saw, but quite frankly, there wasn't much there to analyze. But wait, the tech issues were back again, and this time the casters were forced to stall so long that they just started talking about the RLCS schedule. Just like Cloud9 caught them off guard in game three. Absolutely. So, Johnny, which matches from here really jump out at you as major must-watch matches today? <laughs> Um, for his first ever match casting in RLCS, this was definitely a doozy of a challenge for Johnny Boy. And fans still had no idea what was happening behind the scenes. Torment's internet had completely shut down and there was no way he was getting back into this series. With everything on the line for Cloud9, the timing could not have been worse. At this point, there was only one man who could save them. Shogun, you're going to want to watch what's about to happen. What's funny is Shogun actually thinks that Johnny is messing with him. That's how ridiculous this announcement was about to be. I'm not lying to you. We're having Fireburner sub in for Cloud9. Coach Fireburner was going in. Now, with all the discussion about the new wave of players, the faster chasing demo meta, and teams like Cloud9 unable to keep up, how would a player that was so old that he had already retired keep up? This would be the biggest challenge of Fireburner's career, which was technically already over. Fireburner, stepping in with Gimmick and Squishy for Cloud9 in Game 5. This is one of the most legendary substitutions in the history of Rocket League. But this is the real deal, Shogun. Fireburner, stepping in for Cloud9. I've got absolutely no idea what to expect with this one, and I'm supposed to be the one to tell you guys what's going to happen. Well, let's just watch and enjoy the show. Fireburner. Back in for the first time as he takes a shot for the first time we've seen him now since Dreamhack Valencia. All those months ago, his Safu try to follow that one down. Fireburner immediately taking that one away. This is just so tense. Uh, you know, and he, another reason for Cloud9 to just really go for this win, to try and get the win not just for themselves, but for Fireburner as well in his comeback to the RLCS. Fireburner backing down, choosing to put himself back onto the wall. It is all Cloud9 Fireburner, oh! and it's off the post! What a story that would have been! Fireburner up. Off the backboard, it's going to drop. It gets a second touch that does make it a little bit less threatening. Off the backboard again. Gimmick uncontested, and Safu blocks it. 
So much offense coming out from Cloud9. They are unrelenting. Mechanics are actually looking better than ever, to be honest. I was wondering if he'd kept up his level of play. It looks like he's actually improved it somewhat. I mean, the game's definitely gotten quicker in the past half year. I don't think they've played against him until recently, or definitely not a lot. It's a huge chance for Squishy, and now Fireburner opens the scoring. Your eyes do not deceive you. Cloud9 on the verge of a reverse sweep, scored by their substitute and coach, Fireburner, to put them 1-0 up, but Dapper looks to take it away, and oh. Shock does try to play spoiler. Sonic's with the pressure. Dapper waiting on the far side. He's going to stick it back into the middle. Fireburner looks for the clear. And that's going to go down towards Squishy and himself. They've got the ball on the breakaway. That's going to drop straight out. Gimmick off the side. Good boost still there from Fireburner. Tries to find the top corner. Might have been better off looking for Gimmick. And that will hit the floor over time. Will Cloud9 reverse sweep? Minute and a half now played. Played already over the top. Gimmick's going to try and follow. It's only going to be Dapper though. Blasting the ball over the top of that. Sonic's going to be hard to beat twice as Dapper goes for the shot and Fireburner picks up his third save of the game. It's unreal, the defense from this guy. To read these infield passes and get up in the face of them. Outstanding work, but they need a goal. They need to get the ball into the other half. It's going to drop out all the way back to the midfield. Fireburner just decides to buy some time. You can now see Squishy and Gimmick playing themselves back into the midfield. Squishy with an uncontested hit to Gimmick. What save by Dapper is Fireburner. He's denied. Still on the goal line. Fire! Oh! He puts it in! You could not write the better script, Shogun. He has done it, and Cloud9, they are still in the RLCS season. Fireburner had done the impossible. Not only did he keep up with the new wave, he led the charge for C9, getting himself a post-retirement MVP at the top of the scoreboard. He showed Rocket League fans that you can always come back and be better than ever. Things change fast in Rocket League. Rosters shuffle, formats evolve, people come and go. But the one thing that this community will always have is incredible stories of moments like this. Fireburner capped it all off with a game-winning goal to complete the biggest career comeback in Rocket League history. I'm Sunless Khan. Thanks for watching.